Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Uh, we got an interesting set of experiments today. I'm asking the question, how many joules does it take to break a pepper ball? And we're gonna find out by dropping objects on top of the pepper ball. And we're gonna try some hard objects, we're gonna try some soft hard objects, and as you can see, we've had some success with broken balls. So stay tuned to see how many joules does it actually take? I found a, a few more uh, clips that I'm going to show you after I after I introduce the uh, this topic, uh, and you can see my my results shooting these onto cardboard. I, I included a clip in a previous video, but this is actually the actual video footage of the shots. These are these are quite quite strong and well made. Um, it, it definitely um, is is not easy to to break these. Um, they um, they require quite a bit of force. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think that you could squeeze these and and, and break it. I'm going to try right now and see. Uh, they're filled with talcum powder and uh, in just a little bit and show you the amount of force that it takes in order to break one of these. And we're going to do a, a detailed uh, joule calculation using weights dropped from the height of one foot. How many joules does it take to break one of these? So I, and I'm pretty sure that it's more force than it takes for me to squeeze it. So I'm gonna to try to squeeze it and just see what happens here. Yeah, these things are, these things are really strong. So, so let's see. Um, I, I think um, you've got to balance when you use these between the amount of force that's gonna hit on the projectile in the marker that's gonna project the projectile out through the barrel and then you got the force that that you get when it hits a solid target. And they, there needs to be the right balance. If you have too much force hitting, it's gonna break in your marker. Uh, but if you don't have enough force to push it against the solid target at high enough rate of speed, it's not gonna break as well. And, and that was my experience in the prior clip on the cardboard. And you'll see in the clip, uh, from one magazine of these, uh, there's a fraction of these that don't break, and there's a fraction that do break, but they don't, they may not completely fragment. And so there's a lot of variety. And, and, and that's one of the difficulties with using pepper balls in general, and these are the inert rounds in the purple color, but they're, 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 they're built exactly the same way as a, as a pepper ball in terms of their stability and the way they're sealed. So... Let's, uh, let's take a look at the video first, and then, then we'll do some testing. Okay, let's see what it did. Get back there and see if I can find out where it went. So I can smell the baby powder. Actually, it, it went through the front of the box, as you can see here. So this is a, just a thin Dell box. Are only able to go that far. We got one, two, three, four. It's interesting. I open this up, and then there's one of them in here. It didn't break. Still intact. So I still have one inert round. Um, the inside, the back side busted and you can see the baby powder and you can see it also made a dent in the next box back so here you can see the powder that's inside so this is inert round but the actual active round would have five percent pava which is um, an irritant to the eyes and the skin uh, mixed in with an inert substance as well so this is the um, this thing is packed full of powder as you can see the other one i was looking for so i found all five this is the sixth one. So I looked inside the box that was in the back, found one broken round here, and I found another unbroken round. So I have two that survived. You can see one, the damage here, where it came in and busted, but I still got two of my inert rounds left at a pretty reasonable amount of force. I think the estimate is from this gun at about 300 feet per second, it's about 
10 or 11 joules. Well, that didn't take very much. As you can see, that's just two and a half pounds, but totally destroyed dropping it right on the projectile. So it doesn't take much if you have a hard target in this particular case to really crush these. So they're not, they're not gonna withstand hard surfaces very well at all. So I think we learned something there. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to do it. There was no break with two and a half, so we're going to go up to five. Let's see what we get here. Let's see what we got. No break. Five pounds, still going strong on a soft target. So the problem I was having before with dropping them down like this, which would have been the ideal way, is they were too thin. It had to hit just perfect. And I tried multiple times and I never could hit it. So now I got two doubled up. I got two and a half, two and a half, five pounds, and we'll see how it does. This, even though it down jacket, it, it's still, it's still highly likely, I believe, that it'll break it. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to first drop it like this. It doesn't work. Then we'll try this. But let's try this first. Uh, okay, up about one foot. Oh, that sounded like a possible break to me. Let's see. Pretty flat, like a pancake. Yep, and that's broken. So it doesn't take a lot of a lot of force to break these pepper balls if it's a hard target. Even on even on a heavy down jacket, five pounds here was able to crush the pellet even through a down jacket. So compared to a hard object, I think what you've observed here is that the sand is very good at absorbing the energy from this uh, impact, such that the projectile, or in this case, the, the ball that's not moving, but the sand was, was moving down, was unable to break it. And the sand has a lot of ability to, to give and to absorb the energy. But the projectile just is not broken by uh, a nine foot drop. But it hits with enough force that it broke the internal bag and I had to transfer it into a Ziploc bag. And you can see all of my blue sand is leaking out. Um, and I'll show you. It was originally 4.75 kilograms and 1.65 pound, and this was just some blue silica type sand from Ikea. And that's what I was using for these tests.
Okay, I was finally able to hit it. I tr you, you guys don't know how many times I tried to drop this from 14 feet and hit. And I went through, a, I had to transfer it to another Ziploc bag because I broke the other one. But finally, I got a direct hit. And, and maybe even not a direct hit, but it was enough to truly crush it on one side and break it. And so uh, I believe if it had been a direct hit, it would, have, it would have definitely crushed it. So this was the highest distance. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm showing you the joule calculations on the video so you can see how many joules that it takes with a you know soft surface like sand in order to get a breakage of a pepper ball. All right, it took several tries, but I got it. You can see from the height that I was going from, which was about right here, that was 14 feet according to my measurements. And that's how much it took in order to get a break, as you can see. All right, so what is the take home message from these experiments that I've done? Well, the one thing that I think is is the key message is that if you shoot this on a hard target, you don't really need to shoot it very hard. So you can use a Berna, you can use a TCP that's tuned down. Uh, you can be less than 10 joules and you'll, you'll break this on a hard wall or a floor or something that doesn't absorb energy. But as we know, if the target is a soft target, like a big down jacket or a pillow or something that's very soft, these things are going to be very ineffective. You know, a, a pillow itself is a, is a great shield against a pepper ball. The other issue is that in order to achieve a breakage on a soft target, which might be used for defense against a pepper ball, you have to get over 22 joules. And I think it's probably going to be more likely 25, 30 joules before you'll actually get a breakage. So the point being, um, you can't really fire the firing bolt too fast because this is metal and the metal contact here, again, you've got air blowing, blowing through the system, but this metal is going to break the pepper ball in, in the launcher if the force is going forward too fast. And so you've really got to find the right balance because this is going to really go at a, at a fast rate once you start getting up above 22, 30 joules. And it's going to break the pepper ball in the launcher. So it's sort of a catch-22. You really can't get enough power and send these down range fast enough to break them on a soft target without breaking them in your launcher. So it's really a difficult situation. So that's why these are tricky and they require a lot of thought and a lot of preparation in terms of how you're going to use them, wh what you're going to target. If you shoot and you hit a bone and you, you and it's not covered, I think you'll do a pretty good job at breaking these on arms, face, places that are exposed. But that requires a lot of practice and a lot of skill and it's very tricky. So there's a lot to consider and a lot more things to talk about related to pepper balls as we go forward. But these are things to consider as you think about how to use these wisely and how to get the effective um, benefit of these, which is breaking them. You, 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 the, the force of it hitting, you might as well use a kinetic projectile if you're going to go for the force. But if you want to break them, you want to get that chemical effect, you need to be able to get past this rate limiting step here, get them down range, and you need to get them up over 20 joules, probably close to 30 joules in order to feel comfortable that you can break them on whatever target you're shooting at. Just things to consider. Until next time.